हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन द कोर्स मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस आई एम हरी किशोर कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एम एल आर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी हैदराबाद टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिजाइन ऑफ गेटिंग सिस्टम सो विल स्टार्ट विथ द डेफिनेशन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ गेटिंग सिस्टम देन वील सी वाई डू वी यूज गेटिंग सिस्टम वट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ गेटिंग सिस्टम देन वील सी वट आर द पार्ट ऑफ द गेटिंग सिस्टम then two of the parts today we are going to discuss uh, how to design these two parts first one will be the pouring cup or pouring basin and second one will be the sprue so first of all what is gating system the definition of gating system so gating system is nothing but the parts or the section through which malt and metal pass it's a simple definition the parts or the section through which malt and metal pass it is known as gating system so many parts are there we'll see in next slide what are those parts one by one now the very important question is why do we need gating system or what is the function of gating system so many things are there point wise i have tabulated here so we'll see one by one the first point is the, it should fill completely the mold before freezing what is the meaning of that suppose we are pouring the molten metal okay and we are pouring from the pouring basin if it will solidify over there it will start freezing over there it will not reach to the point i mean it will not reach to the mold cavity so it should fill completely the mold cavity before freezing okay na this is the first uh, point or first function of the gating system second one is turbulence should be minimized suppose we are pouring the molten metal and if turbulence is there or whirling effect is there so it will erode the sand particle if we are using mold as made up of sand so it will erode the sand particles and that sand particle will flow with the molten metal it will go in the mold cavity and after solidification it will appear in the form of uh, defects in the casting so second function is it should minimize the turbulence third one is as i told it should avoid the erosion um, there should be no erosion of the sand particle if it will be eroded those eroded sand particles will flow with the molten metal and it will reach to the mold cavity and finally it will appear in the form of a defect so there should be no erosion over there next one is uh, removing inclusions inclusion means simply foreign particles it may be of many form so also getting should uh, getting system should be capable of removing the inclusion different methods are there we'll discuss one by one how to uh, remove this inclusions next is regulate the flow of molten metal what is the meaning of that means the pouring time or uh, the solidification time should be optimum it shouldn't be too less it shouldn't be too more if it will be too less it will solidify before reaching the mold cavity if it is too fast then again there will be problem over there so it should regulate the flow of the molten metal next is the uh, scrap should be less so as we know many uh, parts will be there in the gating system so our purpose or the purpose of the designing of this gating system is to minimize the scrap as much as we can next one is uh, trap contaminants what kind of foreign particles or whatever the um, mixed particles will be there which is not required in the casting or the final product that we are going to get that should be minimized or there should be uh, apparatus or there should be method through which in the gating system easily we can remove these things and the last and the probably the most important is it should establish the directional solidification now the question will come what is the meaning of directional solidification in the coming lecture of course we are going to discuss this in detail but here the meaning of directional solidification is means the casting i mean the solidification first should start the parts which is away from the riser and then near the riser and the last the solidification should be in the riser this is the meaning of directional solidification in coming lecture we will discuss this in detail so first we are starting that is introduction to the gating system as we told in the previous slide the parts through which molten metal pass is known as the uh, gating system here we can see the where it is uh, starting so this is the first part where the pouring of the molten metal will start and this first part is known as pouring uh, pouring basin or this is also known as cup cup means because generally its shape is of a funnel shape okay na that's why it is known as cup also 
so this is the first part where we will pour the molten metal the second section or the second elements or the part is this is known as a sprue it is a tapered shape we will see why the shape is tapered so it is a tapered shape and it is in between this this is known as well so a sprue well so it is between these two pouring cup and this sprue well next is the choke this this part is known as choke and this area this is very very important also we will see in coming slide so third part is the choke how its dimension should be how it should be designed what should be the area that will be totally based on bernoulli's equation we will see how to design these parts next part is runner this long horizontal part is known as runner and of course the part which is connecting this runner to the mold cavity is known as gates. So, here two gates has been shown. So, this is known as gate and the last is this is a riser. The riser is nothing but we have already discussed riser is nothing but the reserve wire of molten metal. Okay. So, these are the parts or the elements. So, basically these are 1, 2, 3, 4 actually 6 parts main parts. So, one by one we will see what are the basic requirements of designing these six parts if i am telling designing designing means simply what will be the shape of that particular part okay and also that shape how it is going to optimize or simply uh, going to increase the efficiency of the gating system that is the part suppose we want to uh, design this pen i am holding this stylus in my hand so first requirement will be friction coefficient should be high if friction coefficient is not high what will happen i will not be able to properly hold in my hand so also its length should be optimum it shouldn't be too uh, long there will be problem in the holding it shouldn't be too small if too small it will be then also there will be problem so design means what material we are going to use then what is the shape and size of that particular element so all these things also in this gating system where that particular part should be placed that also plays a very important role in the designing so one by one we are going to see how to design so first we will start with the pouring basin or the pouring cup so here is the pouring cup we have uh, taken this uh, a very general image general what i mean by general means this is the generally used pouring cup so this this is the sand this is the sand in which you can see here the pouring basin is this is riser part so here we are pouring the molten metal this is manually cut manually cut means roughly we have cut there is no fixed uh, uh, rule to cut this generally its shape will be of cylindrical but there is no fixed rule of its dimension its diameter may be anything uh, that is, there is no fixed rule for that but the problem with this manually cut is if you are cutting manually so what will happen because sand will be indirectly uh, contact with the molten metal so friction will be very high if friction is very high you know frictional forces will be more so while pouring this as friction force is more between this molten metal and the sand particle so it will erode the sand particle and that eroded sand particle will uh, with molten metal it will go inside the mold cavity and once it will reach over there it finally it will appear in the form of defect so that is the first problem with this manually cut basin or pouring cup another problem as i told erosion of sand as friction coefficient is high or frictional force will be high of course it is going to erode the sand particle so that eroded sand particle with the molten metal it will reach over there in the mold cavity and finally after solidification it will appear in the form of defect in the casting and the last one is as i told this uh, cross section is of cylinder so when we will pour the molten metal swirl effect will be there or rotation of the molten metal will be there and because of that what will happen there will be turbulence over there and that turbulence again will create problem in the casting so these three problems are there with the manually cut pouring basin or manually cut so to remove this the another method is that generally being used nowadays is actually ceramic pouring cup so if you are using different shapes of ceramic pouring cup depending upon the material that we are going to cast different shapes are there we can see in this diagram different shapes of ceramic cups are there so as i mentioned three problems are there first was the friction coefficient was high or the frictional force was high in manually cut pouring cup second problem was the erosion of the sand particles we, if we are using this one this is ceramic pouring cup so those two problems easily easily can be removed here there is no sand particle so it will not be in contact with the molten metal so there will be no erosion of the sand particles so easily we can remove two problems we can reduce the frictional force as well as we can 
remove or completely eradicate the uh, erosion of the sand particle. But the third problem that was the swirling effect that is rotation of the molten metal in the pouring cup still it will be there. So, to remove that nowadays people are using in this ceramic pouring cup that is anti swirl bar. So, what will happen if we are using this anti swirl bar on the top. So, what will happen? Once we will pour the molten metal directly it will not be in contact of the circular cross section. So, what will happen while pouring its velocity will reduce and slowly it will go inside the mold cavity. Whatever the problem was because of the swirling effect that was the turbulence that will be easily minimized with the help of this one. So, if we will summarize in design of pouring cup. So, three things are there the manually cut pouring cup where there was three problem and first was frictional force was high and erosion was the problem and swirling was the problem that first two the defects or first two problem easily can be removed with the help of this ceramic pouring cup and third one will be removed with the help of this one ceramic cup we are using and we are also using anti swirl bar on the top so that the swirling effect can be easily removed from there. Okay. So, this is about the design of the pouring cup and the second one that we are going to discuss that is actually the design of the sprue that is the second part of gating system. This is very very important and you need to understand as I told at the starting design means many things are there. What is the shape of that particular element? What is the size of that particular element in gating system where it is placed? So, all these parameters are very very important during the design of these elements. So, th some of the points has been summarized here has been given related to the shape and size of that particular here it is uh, a sprue and where it should be placed. So, first point is is size should be optimized. It should not be too long, it should not be too small. Its size should be optimized so that the many effects that uh, we have already seen that swirl effect. So, if size is very high at the bottom the speed will be very high because we know anything which is in free fall will gain the velocity as if it will go down because height is increasing. So, what will happen if size is very high? So, what will happen velocity at the bottom will be very high and because of the high velocity we know from momentum transfer it is nothing but force. So, at the bottom force will be very very high. So, it may damage the base or the choke area of the sprue which is at the bottom. So, we will have to take care that the size or the length or the height of the sprue should not be too long. Also, it should not be too small. If it will be too small again there will be problem. That is why it has been written size of a sprue should be optimized. Okay. Second one is its cross sectional area should be in such a way that the vortex formation that is the turbulence can be minimized. If we are using circular cross section, we know there will be turbulence over there. So, the preferred cross section should be a rectangular, but the problem is preparing a rectangular cross section is very, very difficult. So, although it will create a problem turbulence or the vortex flow, generally a circular cross section is being used. That is because of the problem in the manufacturing. Okay. So, second part is it should be uh, able to minimize the turbulence or the vortex formation tendency. Third one is it should be tapered to avoid aspiration effect. This is very very important to understand. Here through diagram we can understand. This is the pouring cup okay, and this is the sprue and we can see here it is tapered. It is tapered. So, it is tapered. Now, question will come in the mind why it is tapered. We can make it like this also. It will be very easy to prepare instead of preparing this tapered shape. So, why we have prepared mathematically you can see. We will use continuity equation to understand this one. Continuity equation. What is the meaning of continuity equation? It is nothing but mass conservation. Mass conservation means whatever the amount of liquid or amount of molten metal we are pouring the pouring basin if there is no sink inside there is no losses although some frictional losses will be there but if we will take the ideal situation so there will be no loss in the material what does it mean whatever mass we are pouring here the same mass will come down in the sprue also that is mass is going to remain constant with respect to time this is mass conservation so this can continuity equation is totally based on this one. So, if you will write this one in the uh, form of density rho area into velocity, this will be this is density, this is area cross section and this is velocity. 
so this is nothing but mass per unit time so if we are taking this two part if we are taking this one as one and if we are taking this one as two so we can write these two are constant means this is constant this is not going to change so we can write rho 1 a 1 v 1 is equal to rho 2 a 2 v 2 as same liquid is there so density will be constant so this will be cancelled out so finally it will comes out area into velocity at section 1 this is equal to area into velocity at section 2 means this area into velocity will remain constant throughout this one and as we know in free fall anybody which is any kind of body or any kind of substance which is falling freely suppose this height is h this height is h free fall means it is falling uh, through gravity that is the only uh, acceleration is acceleration due to gravity that is g so we know once it will reach at this point so its velocity will be under root 2 gh we know this one we can derive this one because acceleration is constant so simply we can apply this formula v square is equal to u square plus 2 gh and as this initial velocity is in free fall so this is 0 so from here we can see v is equal to under root 2 gh so from here we can see velocity is directly proportional to height so here just see this one this height is less and this height is more if we are taking this one section 1 this is the reference point so here if velocity is v1 and here velocity is v2 so of course v2 will be a greater than v1 because height h2 is a greater than h1 so if velocity here is more and velocity here is less and we know velocity into area should be constant according to the continuity equation so area should be less to maintain this equation or to follow this equation that is the reason as liquid go down the part through which it is crossing obviously its area should be less if area will not be less going down then what will happen liquid will flow like this one and it will leave the contact with these surfaces and if it will leave the contact with these surfaces the pressure in this area will be very very less this part which is actually exposed to the atmospheric pressure the pressure here will be more suppose we are writing p naught so this p naught will be greater than this p1 and because of this difference in pressure what will happen the mole material generally which is made up of the sand particle so what will happen the pressure it will force to go inside which is known as aspiration effect and it will result into different kind of defects that is the reason the sprue is generally make tapered okay now that is the reason that's the reason to avoid aspiration effect generally the shape of the sprue is having tapered cross section if it is not tapered then what will happen if to be liquid will not be in contact with the solid part and the difference in the pressure will result in which is known as aspiration effect the next point is there should be filter at the bottom obviously if some contaminant or some impurities are there which is coming with the molten metal so there should be filter at the bottom so that that easily can be filtered over there so second point is there at the bottom there should be a filter and the last one is it should be placed centrally what is the meaning of this one what is the meaning of this one we can see in this diagram this should be placed centrally it shouldn't be i told at the starting in getting system placing of the part is very very important so a sprue it should be centrally placed that's all for the today's lecture next we will see the next part that is the design of the choke and design of the runner thank you